Even in the remote and seemingly pristine landscape of Antarctica, researchers have found microplastics in the water and ice. The microplastics that we found during this study were mostly microfibers. And these fibers um, come from all forms of textiles. Another new study in the North Atlantic shows a huge mix of plastics in some areas of the ocean, all coming from different parts of the world. We also find paint fragments. We find tire dust. Marine life ingests these broken down plastics and they make their way into our food chain. It reinforces this message of there being no silver bullet solution to tackle the plastics issue. On the mouth of the La Plata River in Uruguay, the next step toward a solution has begun. Government delegations meeting for the first of six summits to hammer out a legally binding treaty by 2024. Some of the measures being considered include a cap or even a ban on new plastic production, setting up a circular economy for reusing plastic items, restricting the export of plastic waste and removing harmful chemicals from plastics. It's estimated there are 10,000 types of chemical additives in different plastics. Over two and a half thousand are known to be toxic and harmful, uh, both to humans and um, uh, other organisms. Many scientists say a plastics treaty must hold countries to account, unlike the voluntary model of the Paris Agreement on climate change. We need a transformative shift. Uh, current uh, use and predicted increase in plastic uses is, is, is going to increase. And um, so we need strict binding agreements such as the Plastics Treaty. Canada is part of a so-called high ambition coalition pushing for a legally binding treaty. Notably, the group doesn't include major plastic producers like the US and China. Meanwhile, Canada's ban on some single-use plastic items like cutlery, bags and straws begins its three-year rollout on December 20th. Redmond Shannon, Global News, London.